What is up? What is up? What is up? What is up? Cheers. Live mixing, happy, happy Friday, happy Friday, the start of a beautiful new weekend. I hope you all have had a wonderful week. I hope you all enjoyed the content that has come out of DIY or Die for the past week. Lots of stuff, lots of news, uh, a couple recipes. Hopefully you guys liked a lot of that stuff. Make sure you guys are subscribed over on the website. Uh, make sure you sign up for the newsletter. I always send out a newsletter letter at least once a month. Sometimes it's a little more, sometimes it's a little less. Uh, but it kind of gives you the breakdown of all the stuff that I've been doing. Uh, make sure you're following over on Twitter at DIY or Die Vaping as well as Instagram. Uh, Instagram also important. And uh, make sure you guys are mixing, mixing up, man. Make sure you guys are practicing your mixing and you're getting creative and you're letting those creative juices flow. Today, we have a lot to talk about. A lot, a lot to talk about. First thing we're going to do, we're gonna take a look at this meeting. This is a very important meeting. We're gonna, I have some timestamps of some important details from the meeting. I'm gonna rant and give you my opinion of the entire meeting afterwards. Then we're gonna jump into why I think Flavor Art is the best flavoring company for beginners. Uh, and we're gonna dive into that whole thing. And then at the end, after that, um, you you should have a few recipes. So we're not going to do the traditional, I sit here and I mix, I look for flavors for an hour and then make a recipe. The whole flavor art section, you'll see a bunch of different recipes along the way. So hopefully that'll give you guys your fix. Okay. So without further ado, I do want to state that, um, um, you could pick up my one shots over at eSigExpress.com which will no longer be eSig Express. As a matter of fact, they are rebranding. So good for them. They are rebranding their name to Flavor Jungle. You know, it's funny someone said, wow, Flavor Jungle, it sounds pretty similar to Jungle Flavors. I don't know how I feel about that. And I was just had to be like, look, they own uh, Jungle Flavors. <laughs> so it makes perfect sense that their name is Flavor Jungle. Now, you know, is it the best name? I think it's pretty cool, but I... I guess Flavor Express was already taken. I'm assuming they probably looked at that. Flavor Jungle, perfectly fine. Ooh, look at this little like neon sign banner they got going on. Anyways, if you want to support Flavor Jungle, you want to support DIY or Die, the best thing to do is head over there, click view all brands, head down to DIY or Die right here, my one shots, pick them up. They're $9.99. These are flavorings. They're flavoring only. You can't vape them. You can't, you, you can't do anything with them unless you put them into something. Um, and uh, and they're 9.99, and you're gonna you can mix up easily around 300 milliliters of e-liquid if you'd like. Um, and they're all perfectly developed. There there there's no no more further development needed with them, um, other than you know a little bit of elbow grease to 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 actually configure the recipes together. Except for two, uh, uh, Elizabeth's custard as well as Milk Boy. These are layers, and these are meant to be used in layering with recipes. So they're not uh, essentially complete. You can vape them complete, but they're not like the other ones which are complete recipes. So this is the best way to support DIY or die. You can also head over to liquidbarn.com where the same products essentially reside, except it's a different brand. This, hey, shout out to Patrick King. Thanks for all you do, brother. We appreciate you. I appreciate your $5 donation. Thank you so much, my friend. You did not have to do that. Next time, save your cash, head over to Liquid Barn, pick up, a one shot that's a lot better that's a better way to, to support diy or die five dollars you get 15 mils what will mix you around 150 milliliters um you can also uh get a 30 mil for 15 bucks um oh quick is sold out third or 60 mils i'm sorry quick is sold out with 60 mils so you can only get 15s for now anyways yes liquidbarn.com pick up the one shot collection here these are the tastemaker collection and if you are in the eu or the uk make sure you head over to chefsflavors.co.uk. 
head to the one shot check the one shot sections head over to DIY or die over here on the left and then this will bring you to the DIY or die and your recall and tastemaker collection they have them all over at chefs you know why because chefs has everything if you ever need anything chefs probably has it all right so let's jump right into things if you guys have any questions about mixing you have any questions about what we're talking about you have any questions about life in general tag me in the chat i will see your question and i will address you back uh let's see if there's any questions so far wayne timco i'll definitely be signing up for the yearly membership within the next two three months two three weeks to keep providing flavors to people here in massachusetts that's what i like to see man good stuff that's what i like to see hopefully the uh the subscription I ho hopefully you enjoy the subscription um yes massachusetts the damn shame what's going on over there new york city as well new york city just banned flavored uh e-liquid did they ban all vaping i don't think so i think just flavored e-liquid but i could be wrong for some reason i don't remember which one it was let me make sure it's flavored really quickly yes yeah, just flavored e-liquid yeah you remember too like new york doesn't mess around with tobacco like they need their new york city in particular they need their tobacco money they killed a guy because he was you know he he made he took away like three cents from big tobacco so they killed him it's pretty insane over there um so it's unfortunate that massachusetts and, and new york city you know the vapors they're gonna are going through this but we will have to figure out ways to allow you to um you know continue on i'm sure i'm sure we'll think of something christoph uh Hondrip, i recently bought one of your one shots and now and now see that it's been over a year since I it was bottled. How old do you normally keep flavorings based Nick before replacing them with new ones? Mom, flavorings they can last they... a long time. I'm multiple years. There's I have flavorings that have lasted over five years. Over five years, and they're only a little bit less potent than when I first got them. They don't go bad or anything. The only thing that does go bad is your nicotine that can oxidize. VG and PG can kind of go bad after a couple years. If they're not stored properly, they kind of just seep too much moisture and they kind of get funky. But if your flavorings are stored correctly, it should last you multiple years. All right, let's get into this meeting. So President Trump met with members of the vaping industry, their advocates. They met with Juul. They met with Enjoy. They met with Matt Myers and Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids, as well as the women from Concerned Women, the Concerned Women group. I didn't know this was a thing, but they met with them. They met with the American Lung Association, the American Cancer Association. They met with um, who else was there? They met Greg Conley was there. Tony Abood was there from VTA. Um, there was a bunch of people there all from opposing sides and it was fascinating to watch it was really fascinating to watch so essentially what you had was the vaping open system vaping industry in one corner you had jewel and the closed system vaping industry in the other corner jewel is sort of in their own territory and kc crosswaith which is their new ceo he's kind of by himself in this whole thing then you have the antis and they're kind of all by themselves in their corner, but it's a lot of them. So you have this sort of just this clashing of these minds just coming together and it's a disaster. It really is a disaster, but it ended up benefit, in my opinion, it ended up benefiting vapor uh, tremendously. And I think our case was very much made. And I think this meeting was very productive. So we're going to go through some of the points through the meeting and I'm just going to discuss them a little bit. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, coming here at 740 in the timeline here. I'll drop the chat or I'll drop this in the chat. If you guys want to watch this on your own, feel free. But uh, we're going to we're going to be taking some clips out of here. So this is at 740. Where are you at? Where are you at? flavored e-cigs let me know if you guys can hear that we need you to help people want to leave the menthol they say get rid of flavors but leave the menthol i've heard that from a lot of people no go ahead well what we have seen in the data is that mom i want to leave vape. menthol then they'll just they'll start using menthol um, so it and what we've seen so far is that even when the flavors some flavors are uh, are eliminated that they'll still keep on going by the way, this guy's from the ALA. He's from the American Lung Association. Not our friend. Anything that's flavored. 
So um, we, that is so not a good solution. Suggest? What do you suggest? I'm suggesting exactly as what you suggested, that you take all flavored e-cigarettes off the market, menthol. including mint and menthol. Well, the new JAMA data suggests that kids don't use menthol, though. So I think there's some, there's some problem, because in the cigarette category, a third of the category is menthol. And um, there is no question this country needs to solve the problem of youth access to vaping. I think we can do that. I think your comment about going to V21 is a step there. But I think um, things like no direct their uh, licenses pulled them. So, so how many stores do you represent? 153,000, two and a half million employees that conducts 160 million transactions. Now, were you hiring stores five years ago? What happened? It like skipped. Um, there is no question this country needs to solve the problem of youth ads. I can think of in Florida, in Ohio. All right, anyways. So I thought this was interesting because, see, Trump is not, he's not a drug guy. He's not an alcohol guy. He's pretty clean cut, which is really cool. I think that's really commendable, but I think it's because he takes other drugs that just don't allow him to use that kind of stuff. Even though, you know, you hear reports that he was never, he was always like this. He was kind of, you know, straightforward, you know, uh, straight edged rather. Um, but anyways, he's not, he's not sort of familiar with the, with that sort of stuff. So when he kind of brings up like, what about menthol as menthol being a flavor? Um, and then the ALL, ALA says, you know, it, it doesn't matter. It, it's all flavorings, right? It's all flavorings. They're going to essentially uh, gravitate to whatever's available. So we need to remove flavorings, which doesn't make sense because tobacco is a flavor. You can't, you can't regulate flavors. You just can't, you can't do it. You would have to ban all flavors. You can't even allow tobacco. You would have to ban all flavors no flavorings allowed because it gets too sticky it's like saying we're gonna ban paintings of houses it's just so vague and the, the, it just doesn't make sense you have to have someone that's going to you know effectively be the decider of is this painted of a house or is this not is this does this exist exactly tobacco with no other characterizing flavor or is it not so the regulation just doesn't even make sense but then you kind of hear kelly and conway come in they're like look you know, they weren't even really, the, the, the data doesn't support whatever you're saying, which I always thought was interesting. So then it goes further. Um, there's a lot of sort of anti stuff in the beginning. Um, but they kind of do their rounds where they kind of introduce themselves. Then you get into the menthol talk. Then they start getting into the jobs aspect. And then Greg Connolly comes in and this is at 12. 40 here. I hope that my times didn't get messed up whatever happened here, but We're gonna we're gonna go to 1240 and we're gonna play what Greg Connolly has said And this is like one of the best parts of I mean it comes in early, but it's one of the best parts of the meeting to ban flavors We would abide by that law yeah, yeah. Me, sure. Mr. President your instincts on September 11th were correct But facts and the situations change on September 11th You were under the impression what the CDC was saying was that vaping Vaping in general was killing people, but now we know. Real quickly, um, Addy Tooney, what's up, Addy Tooney? Love you, brother. Just want to let you know, um, e po posting emojis like that will get you banned. So I remember we had we were talking about um, X wanting and how my channel could get banned. It's actually the other way around, so they can flag you for spam if you guys post uh, too much stuff in in like in a sequence. So watch out for that, guys. You don't want to get your accounts banned for no reason from the CDC that their main focus of their investigation, it's not store-bought nicotine products. It's not the companies that Tony Abood represents. It was illicit THC oil cartridges sold by drug dealers. And so right now, it's important that you know Michael Bloomberg, who is no friend to your presidency, he is funding $160 million to try to ban these flavors. And many people in this room are the recipients of those monies. So they are not here um, with the position of we can come to a compromise, they have money specifically to get these products banned. And the 10,000 plus small businesses, they can't survive with just tobacco and menthol. They age restrict, they only allow adults in their store. So what would you do? Uh, I think we need to raise the age to 21. We need bulk sales purchase limits. We need marketing uh, restrictions. We, and also most importantly, there is in May of 2020, every single vaping product on the market has to go through what's known as a pre-market review. That's going to cost several million dollars per product. So even if we solve this crisis today, which I hope we do, in five, six months, we're back where we started 
with potentially only the largest multi-billion dollar companies being able to survive. Because people can't afford it. Exactly, and all these small businesses, they're the ones that are employing people. 70,000, 80,000 direct jobs, 70,000 indirect jobs. So what are you recommending on flavors? On flavors, we think we need at least a wide open market in some places. So we would prefer only Tobacco 21, bulk sales limits, many things advocated by NACS, but at the worst, products that haven't undergone FDA review should be able to continue to be sold in adult-only stores. But that's not the best. We want smokers to be able to access these products everywhere they can purchase a pack of Marlboros. And so this is excellent, man. Greg Connolly is so good. Um, he brings up Michael Bloomberg immediately. He's like, look, you got a, you got a bunch of shills. He knows that Trump hates Michael Bloomberg. Uh, I actually don't really know too much of their history. I know that they were friends at one point, and then Trump became Trump as we know him today, and I think Michael Bloomberg started to attack him, and Trump just does, doesn't like Michael Bloomberg now. So we're 10 minutes into the interview. We're 10 minutes into the meeting, and Greg Connolly goes, hold on a second, just to let you know, he put $160 million into each and every one of these people's pockets. So just remember that. So when we tell, when we talk about real numbers and jobs, we're coming at it at a standpoint of people that are supporting you and coming at it at a standpoint that, you know, uh, we need to survive. We need this industry, this free market to survive. Where the other guys, I mean, they're just shills. They're paid by Michael Bloomberg, which is going to be soon uh, a candidate running against you. And you need to be aware of that. And I thought that was excellent, right? Putting that in there is just great. And then uh, I thought I think it was uh, awesome to bring up the PMTA because that is really the issue that we have at hand. Sure, they can do whatever they want now, but it's only going to come to an end when the PMTA comes, which is unfortunate. And I think um, we kind of need to be wary of that. And bringing that up to the president is, is a good idea, though I'm not sure how much that's going to sway policy because that's ultimately just an fda decision i don't know exactly I, that might have to go to congress to rechange those rules i'm not exactly sure how that all works but anyways it's smart bringing it up because it's going to be covered anyway uh you know we have the biggest news organizations here covering all this stuff so it's always good to see that kind of stuff all right um but anyways it was just really nice to see uh greg kind of just coming right out the gate calling calling these guys shills which is awesome Senator What's Rand going Paul, on here? What are all these links? Uh, who is a doctor? Just two weeks ago in the Senate, he said these products. All right, are we got to go safe. to Enjoy. Enjoy comes in at eighteen thirty, and they ha they sh they shoot off some some fire. They sh they shots are fired. The juice are removed. We took it out. We took out all of our flavor SKUs, including them. We sell menthol and tobacco SKUs, but we will defer to the FDA. We said who makes who make. makes the flavors? Then I mean, you're the biggest of the group. Who makes the flavors? Different companies? Different companies. And they continue to make flavors. Yes, and sir. Mr. President, we are the second largest flavor company in the country. We represent, for every three Juul products that are sold, one Enjoy is sold. Right. We had 1.2% youth use versus 60% youth use for Juul. It's not necessarily a flavor problem. So what are you, what there, are you there are two unassailable facts. The youth problem is a huge problem, and flavors definitively contribute to it. But on the other hand, the other problem, which is macro to this situation, is that if you ban flavors, which there is some public health redeeming virtue to doing so, right. 100,000 Americans are going to lose their jobs. It's not disputed by anybody in public health. Their jobs. community and the vape shop yeah. community. Actually, the number's higher, Mr. President. The number's 100,000. They, they, they will lose their jobs, well. sir. They sell, I, I, I'd like to finish. Yeah. They sell exclusively flavors. So the question really is, I don't think we need to argue the, the virtue of youth not using these products. We all agree that they shouldn't. Enjoy, Reynolds American, who represent number two and three in the country, eight, with, in the absence of Juul, represent the balance of the convenience store channel electronic cigarette market, had 1.2 and 2.4% youth use, respectively. Where is Reynolds? We, we believe that you can market flavors responsibly, Mr. President. 90% of our used consumers are above the age of 25. All right. You're still doing so Enjoy really stands up for open vapor in this situation, which was so surprising. Shout out to the guys over at Enjoy. They don't have to, right? They, like they said, they're the number two. They are the second best selling e-cigarette on pretty much the planet, I think, um, especially in the US. So what they bring up, they say, look, yes, there's a youth use problem, but is it really 
flavors. Is it really flavors? Because Reynolds has the views, we have our Enjoy product, we both sell flavors, yet our youth use rate, and we're also you know two and three respectively in the number of sales, our youth use rate is one to 2%. It's extremely low, where Juul's youth use rate is extremely high. So what is it really flavors or is it really just one player? And then you kind of have Casey Crosswave sitting there like, yeah, yeah, what do you, how do you say to that? You know, it's really hard to defend that. Jewel is really only there to answer the questions thrown at them. They, no matter what, they're pretty much okay. They're pretty much okay, which is unfortunate. It's just how politics play in this world. But um, really awesome to see Enjoy kind of, you know, coming at Jewel like that. Like, look, it, it, how is it flavors when we also sell flavors? We're also the second and third respectively selling e-cigarettes in the US, but we don't have those numbers. It's just it's just not apparent. All right, next we have Trump on prohibition. Um, so this is a big, big thing. And you just, I'll let you listen and then we'll talk when we'll talk about it. But this comes up right next at 20, 20 minutes in. Uh, so already pretty, pretty productive interview. Oh, I guess we're pretty much almost there. So I'll just let it run. Yes, we so are. So Jules not doing it, they are both doing it. That's interesting, right? And sir, I think that the, the issue or the opportunity here is to make a deal for the industry to come here and say, we well, recognize that's why I have you here. I mean, we I recognize that you could do something for everybody, where everybody's happy. The one, the one thing I see, though, it, you watch Prohibition, you look at, you know, with the alcohol, you look at cigarettes, you look at all. If you don't give it to them, it's going to come here illegally. Yes, okay, right. they're going to make it. But instead of Reynolds or Juul or, you know, legitimate companies, good companies making something that's safe, they're going to be selling stuff on a street corner that could be horrible. That's the one problem I can't uh, seem to forget. I mean, I've seen it. You just, you just have to look. You have to look at the history of it. And now, instead of having a flavor that's at least safe, they're going to be having a flavor that's, that's poison. That's a big problem. Sir, now the opportunity. This now is companies, magnificent to hear. So it's kind of weird because Trump's drug policy is not this way. It's the complete opposite of this way. Nonetheless, um, it's really cool this, to hear him understand that that is the reason why you shouldn't ban anything, really, right? It just opens up a black market. There's such a demand for flavored vapor products that if you take them away, you're going to introduce externals, you're gonna take away jobs, you're gonna introduce uh, revenue in other places that aren't the US, you're not gonna be able to take those tax revenue, you're only going to introduce danger into the ecosystem, and it becomes a much bigger mess than it is, and he understands that, and he says it right there, and that is something, he says it, I, it's something that I just can't forget, and it's because that is the reason why they're taking this very, very slowly, and this is the only reason why I have hope that a PMTA could be changed. Like Greg Conley was saying, products that don't go through pre-market review, maybe they can't be sold in gas stations and C-stores, but let them be sold in a vape, uh, adult-only vape shops. Um, that way we can still have these safe regulated products that are listed at the FDA, right? All the ingredients will have to still be listed into the FDA, but it doesn't have to go through this extremely expensive, rigorous process that only the biggest companies can afford. And I mean, it's just nice to hear Trump talk about prohibition in that way. Next, we have Tony Abood of the VTA coming in. Tony Abood did a wonderful job. Shout out to Tony Abood. Shout out to Greg Connolly. Shout out to Enjoy. Shout out to shout out to Reynolds America. I guess. I mean, they were kind of helping us out as well, um, a little bit. But Tony Abood is next. That's a no-brainer. That has to be done. It has to be done because that keeps it away from the eighteen-year-olds. Let's back it up a second. First. Sir, if it's flavor names, why marketing has not been addressed yet, and that's why in our plan 21 and done, Mr. President, not only have we called for increasing the age to 21, that's a no-brainer. That has to be done, and has to be done, because that keeps it away from the 18-year-olds. By the way, that's what he, he says right there, we're going to be doing it. it. means he's going to implement Tobacco 21, so it looks like that's coming. It looks like that's coming. Um, is that going to be the only thing coming? I'm not exactly sure. PMTAs need to be changed. But that's the feeling that I get. I think Trump wants to just raise the age and that should be enough to sort of put a buffer, just kind of keep the antis quiet for a second while he kind of goes to the campaign again. Um, but I could be wrong, you know, it's, you never really know what goes on there. Um, but that's what he says, he goes, yeah, we're gonna be doing that. We're gonna be putting in Tobacco 21. We played out 
21 different marketing restrictions, banning advertising on television, banning advertising, ban advertising, advertising altogether. Candy, no candy, banning advertising of the kind that Senator Romney is complaining about. Everybody's criticized the industry for their marketing, but nobody is talking about actually putting in marketing restrictions. What do you think of the Senate bill? Well, I we think it's the wrong approach, frankly, and I think the better approach would be to raise the age to 21, put severe restrictions on how, how you market the product, then on top of that, you have to increase penalties for retailers because our retailers are fine with increasing penalties because they do know that they are age gating and keeping these products out of the hands of kids. So we say three strikes and you're out. Today, the FDA can allow you to have seven strikes before you're actually told to stop selling tobacco products. That's unacceptable. And that's perfectly okay from our perspective. On top of that, age verification. We are in the day age. So when he says that it's perfectly okay from our perspective, speaking about the shops, he's basically saying, look, we're perfectly fine implementing a street three strike rule. We don't care about marketing restrictions. Our companies don't sell to youth. If they do, then it's by just some very small outlier number. Um, we know that it's convenience stores and gas station, as well as just friends and family. That's 90, or what I think they said, like 60 to 7%. It's friends and family. That's where they're really getting it from. So no one really has an issue with that. And, uh, and I think that that could be some sort of implementation that could be done. And then also stricter penalties. If you fail those three, th three strikes, then you get your license or whatever taken away. You get these heavy, heavy fines, and you're probably out of business. Technology. And that is what this is. This is a technology product that is helping people quit smoking. And unfortunately, well, for some in people, some cases, in no. some cases, yeah, it is. But it's really important. That's why people are so, Multiple so devoted to this particular product. But third party age verification is important. So this was interesting where he goes, in some cases, it helps people quit smoking. Um, don't know why. I don't know who's telling him that it's in some cases. I mean, it's in most cases but nonetheless that's that is something that he's aware of. all right so then we go to to the question that he brings up to an anti which is excellent this is an excellent exchange here in this interview just take a take a listen investigation of that and we're worried that we leave one Mom, flavor on the market baby. even menthol that the children will go to that because they're going to want something to help they, they're they're going to want something. How, and that's why action is so desperate. How do you solve easier. the counterfeit problem if you do that? Um, okay, so they're not going to man. None of these guys are going to do it. They all have legit companies. So my, How do you solve I, I the fact that it's going to be shipped in from Mexico? I'm looking at Secretary Azar and hoping he has a great solution for that. Mom, I, I want to be a problem. Able to you have the same problem with drugs and everything. But, there but is but no our, our big thing is, is, and this is really where it goes back to. So, someone's name is Wayne Abedes. Uh Thank you for the follow. So this is an excellent exchange where the woman from, I believe, um, Concerned Women's for America or something, uh, she goes, we're afraid that, you know, they're just going to move to something else. And he goes, all right, say they flavors are removed. How do you solve them getting access to counterfeit products? And she just doesn't have an answer. She goes, well, I hope your health secretary has an answer for me because I don't. And he goes, well, it's a big problem. And this is what we're trying to figure out here. Do, do we just allow a rampant counterfeit uh, uh, vaping industry, you know, go happen? Because you don't seem to have the answers. It doesn't seem like we're coming up with answers here. So I thought this was magnificent how he's starting to say like, okay, maybe these shills are really, they just don't have any answers. They just want to ban everything because Michael Bloomberg gave them money. That's kind of the vibe I get from Trump. He's not, when it comes to, when it comes to the game, when it comes to industry, he knows how to play it. He's, he's, he's a master. That's how he made his money. He knows about deregulation. He knows that a lot of these regulations are just propped up bullshit politician, red tape, mafia style crap. And we kind of got to take a lot of this down. And when he was first introduced to the vaping problem, it wasn't because he was looking at it at a way to sort of clamp down on it. It was just something Melania and, and Ivanka brought to him. And then Mom, he started to I look forward to it. And only because of these deaths that arose from the THC black market illicit products did this become a much bigger issue. So I think it's kind of like a you know a, a gift to us because it allowed us to, to get this meeting in front of him. And uh, yeah, so next, just look at the way that Trump looks at Matt Myers. Matt Myers is the guy from Campaign from Tobacco Free Kids. He's the snake sniveling shill. He's the worst. Um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show you how uh, Trump takes 
this is how he views Matt Myers. This, this is great. You will have companies who produce products that have tobacco flavor, which used to be the most popular, may still be among adults, although not among kids. And then second, what we're talking about here and what your proposal was, for the companies that then have data to show that they have a product, <laughs> with or without a flavor, that actually promotes cessation and, is a bit, um, and doesn't unduly appeal to kids, can go to the Food and Drug Administration for the review. We're not talking about a permanent ban. What we're talking about is making them develop the science, produce it to the agency that has the authority to review it, and then have a science-based decision made about what's in the public's interest. So if you could tell, he's now defense mode. He's now almost looking down on Matt Myers, and he's just kind of looking around. He's not listening to him. He's not taking him seriously. He's not taking him seriously. This is what this body language tells. It's it's almost as if like he's just very just apprehensive. Drug administration for the review. We're not talking about a permanent ban. What we're talking about is making look, them look. develop the science, produce it to the agency okay, that has right. the authority to sure. review it. You got 160 million dollars from Michael Bloomberg. Let's. I'll, I'll listen to you. Right. Greg Connolly comes back in at 47:35. And uh, he puts in his statements. This is excellent as well. Or is this? Okay. I certainly want to echo our public health partners, but on a daily hair. basis, the number one concern that we hear from our communities, from parents, from schools, is that how do we really address this epidemic that we're facing? So all of us. Shout are out to Wayne Timko. To you, your leadership role in terms of really helping to create the next generation that's going to be From free American of addiction. Law, what, is, what is your recommended solution? Is to ban all flavors, all including flavors. menthol. In other words, including menthol. Mint okay. and menthol. That's a big, that's a big statement. <laughs> that's, that's a very big statement, though, right? Yeah, yeah, it, the it, American it, Cancer Society has to redo that. I mean, it, it's certainly an important step, Mr. President. Now here comes Greg Connolly. You were putting out in, in September as the, uh, so. These groups have 160 million reasons from Michael Bloomberg to not come to the table and compromise on anything. 160 million dollars from Michael Bloomberg. It's volunteer parents Cross around the country. We are parent advocates, volunteers, because parents are in pain. I sat at a table just on Monday. So, as you can hear... Conley comes in and goes, yeah, American lung, American cancer, blah, blah, blah. These guys have 160 million reasons to follow his rhetoric. And it's true. I mean, it's just they're not true health organizations anymore. They're just paid shill. They're lobbyists, essentially. And uh, I can't quite tell his body language from it, but he's he kind of seems like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how much I could take. He goes, it's a big statement from you guys, right? You want to ban all flavors. So he seems like... That all flavors mo uh, message is sort of, you know, it, it's not quite ringing with them. Um, Trump comes in at 50 minutes, and we're going to take a listen here. We're almost done. Then we'll get to some mixing. Our generation, all families, all kids, there are 5 million kids doing this. That means there are millions of families who are in pain and that they need you to save our generation so how many of children kids. will do it if you get rid of the flavors. I didn't hear that. 97%. How many children will do it? Let's say you don't yeah. have flavors. Okay. So, so now you have five million. How many children will do it if you don't have well, flavors? So here's the thing: ninety-seven percent of kids who are vaping are using flavored vapes. So it is, you know, it is. Do you agree with it? Youth numbers are certainly indicating that kids are getting access. Well, it's a CD. It, it mm -hmm. came from the CDC. It came from the CDC. It came from the government. 97%. So, ninety-seven percent. Really, what we're talking about is. Will they put their own flavors in? Let's say you can't get flavors. Are they going to inject it with flavor? Will they put their own flavors in? Our, our, our product is a single-use. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Mr. President, that's what it is. One hundred percent of the deaths are the result of counterfeit. That's it. That's it. So. This is an interesting exchange where he kind of understands like, all right, how many kids are going to vape if you don't take if you take away the flavors? They don't have an answer for that. They really don't have an answer for that. Um, I would suggest that that number is not going to change. Some of the statistics they bring up. Look, Juul took away their most popular flavors. They took away all their flavors except uh, tobacco and, and mint. And then they took away mint. Their business only rose. It only grew. So it's hard to kind of debate that stuff. You know what I mean? It's it, it do kids, are they really enticed by flavors? Are they just enticed 
by Juul and the nicotine that Juul provides. I would argue they are the 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 latter. Um, and finally, we have Enjoy closing statements here, which are magnificent, and it kind of closes out the meeting. So let's hear it. So when Juul took it off, you had all flavors. It took it off. What's your business now compared to what it was when you had flavors? Three times bigger. Mr. President, here yeah, has your start. business gotten bigger? The business grew, but we recently took mint off the market, which was 70% of our business. So, so your business grew even without the flavor? It grew it's without number one flavor. They, they, they kept mint. Mr. President, it was last week, right? And, uh, yes, very okay. recently. recently took Mr. Mint. President, very recently. Recently. I don't really know. I don't know yet. We nobody's just, disputing that children like per, do prefer flavors. So do adults. This is Andrew. 93% of adults use flavors as well. That's not the point. Here's the point, Mr. President. There are four companies. There are four companies that will remain standing if you ban flavors. Right. Jewel, Enjoy, Reynolds, and Imperial Tobacco, which owns Blue. Every other small. It's not bad for my business for you to ban flavors. It centralizes an oligopoly for me and three other brands that exist on shelves in 153,000 convenience stores. I'm not arguing for the bottom line of my so company. why are you fighting for flavors? Because adults, just like flavors help as a conduit for kids to use it. It's a conduit for adults to switch from tobacco, which tastes terrible, and, and use the vapor product. And I believe, I'm not speaking as a representative of the company or making a cessation claim, that if I was an adult smoker, or if my daughter, God forbid, was an adult smoker, I would prefer her to use a vapor product. And if that vapor product was flavored, and it gave her a seven times greater chance of making the switch from combustible cigarettes, to me, as an individual, not as a representative of my company, that is a public health virtue. But Nobody's just no six. evidence. Let's, yeah, daughter my daughter's six, six, but it doesn't matter. No, if but your child saying, smoked Marlboro's, no, 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 you no. would give Let your child a jewel. I guarantee no, it. No, no, no. I guarantee it. And so, God no forbid, she should ever that. use any tobacco product. God forbid. Do. And I mean that sincerely. Yes, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about five million kids who are currently using these flavors. Not currently vapes. using. Five million is a misrepresentation. And I'm so not the trying CDC's to show the audience. these numbers are a misrepresentation? No, five million is five ever tried. Have reported I know. Know. Okay. Ever last tried. Last ever last tried. Day. Day. No, last 30 days. no, it's not. All right. And that's pretty much the end of it. Uh, I guess I'll show you like the very tail end with Trump. Uh, they don't. They do around this table. It's being sent over. Uh, we're going to this business is a small flavor cartridge. Thank you. It is that are cartridge Not made where you would homebrew it. Homebrew sort of mix it. All of you this is important. All of the e liquids that are being sold in vape shops have already been registered with the FDA with their ingredients already on file with the FDA. And those ch those ingredients haven't been able to change for the last three years since the deeming regulation went into effect. What, per what percent are cartridge-based nicotine delivery devices like Enjoy or Juul? I, I don't have the number for I can get that for you. But, yeah. uh, so but would they go out? Would your shops go out of business based certainly. on cartridge fl flavored cartridge products? If you want to sell just flavored cartridge products, then you are then you are literally cutting off the entire entire industry. Well, no, the I'm sorry, shop that, industry. No, no. You, if you, you just said you don't. You just you just said you don't know. What percent of what I, vape I shops' the, business is small flavor cartridge? Thank you. Small. Closed systems are very rarely. Thank you. Thank you. Just say it. Closed systems are infrequently sold in vape shops. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. 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 Let's see if he caught that. This business is small for flavor. I don't know the exact number. Thank you. It is small. Closed systems are very rarely. Thank you. Just say it. Closed systems are infrequently sold in vape shops. Right. 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 Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. All right. So, VTA gets to close out the meeting, and essentially, it's just like. All right, we kind of have, we kind of know what we're gonna do, right? We're gonna implement Tobacco 21. We're going to let the FDA kind of deal with this from from here on out. We're gonna kind of, that's the kind of vibe that I'm getting from from this meeting and and from from Trump's body language and kind of how he's handling this situation. Um, I'm very curious. I haven't looked on Twitter in a couple hours, so I'm curious to see what the other guys who were there have to say. I think this was very productive, um, and this is this is pretty good. So. I want to know what you guys think. Do you guys think that this was a productive meeting? Do you think that our case has been presented well? A few things they didn't talk about. They didn't talk about the voting, right? They didn't talk about voting at all, which I'm very curious as to why. This is a big reason why Trump 
had this meeting, right? It's he kind of took a step back and said, "Hold on, I'm going to lose a lot of votes here." Maybe they didn't have to talk about it. They rather make their case in front of uh, the anti groups just to sort of see how they they play against that. Um, but that that was never discussed. Very happy that Michael Bloomberg got st- discussed. They only touched upon the PMTA with Greg Connolly in that one statement. I would have loved a, a little bit more of a dive there. Um, but overall, man, I think it was productive, and I think I, it makes me wonder where Trump's head is that at on this issue because it was never supposed to be this sort of big thing, and now all of a sudden it's thrust in front of him. He's got Michael Bloomberg giving people money. He's got this interesting sort of political angle to now consider. He's got a, a, a base of subscribers who I would say 70% are Trump ardent Trump supporters who are now thinking maybe I'll stay home because it looks like this guy isn't going to take my industry seriously. Uh, and this is something that Trump, this is why Trump won, right? He, he's arguing for those type of jobs, those manufacturing jobs, those energy jobs like coal, those steel jobs. Um, he, he's kind of champion for them. And now, you know, when it comes to the, this industry, it seems like he might be taking a different angle. But overall, I am very positive from the outcome of this. I don't have, watching that interview, um, and you guys can argue with me if you'd like, if you have any dissenting opinions. Watching that interview, I didn't see anything from the anti groups that that was a stunner. Like it was this sort of thing, like, oh, uh, how do you answer that? You know what I mean? It's all just this pseudoscience, easily debunked bullshit that we've all heard before. It's almost as if like your school nurse went up and debated, uh, where she just had this pamphlet she printed off from Google and was just kind of reading, you know, these false statements like 5 million kids are using nicotine every day completely false that's not a true statement there's so many things here that they could have easily kind of dug into and and, and ripped apart and probably will um the body language to me is very interesting you know the crossing of the hands when certain people are talking the you know you'll notice that he kind of leans forward a lot and 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 kind of squints his eyes a little bit like all right, let me let me kind of let me kind of just show a little bit of like a submission, almost like how a dog does it, where a dog kind of comes to you and they put their head down. It's like a submission move, and it kind of gets across like I'm listening, right? It gets across that I'm listening. This you're not listening. You're not listening to anyone when you do this. Go ahead, try it. Go somewhere, have a debate with someone, and just cross your arms and start looking around and tell me how much you take in, right? It's just that's just not how our bodies work. So that stuff was really interesting and. Um, we're probably not going to know exactly what's going to happen uh, for, for a few weeks. Um, I would assume I would love to know now, like I'm getting, I would love to know after the meeting, right? I would love to, I would have loved them to just figure something out there. Just this limbo thing, not knowing is just frustrating. It's really frustrating. And it's the reason why a lot of shops are going under when they probably don't have to. They're just so sick and tired of being uncertain. And I get it. Um, unfortunately, it, or, or fortunately, um, fortunately, it, it means there's no action. But unfortunately, that uncertainty does get a bit stressing. Uh, this was big. This was really big. A vaping meeting. Greg Conley, Tony Abood, Amza was there, right in front of the president, making their case. Greg Conley is a rock star. The whole Michael Bloomberg thing was great, um, and so was Tony Abood. Tony Abood did a great job showing that look this is an industry of small mom and pop shops who only sell flavored e-liquid they only rely on flavored e-liquid uh and i think that and then you'll see it there like when they talk about it at the end they're gonna lose their jobs right you're gonna if you take away flavors all these people are gonna lose their jobs and then he goes we're done all right thank you shut up azar you know stop talking why is mitt romney there right i understand what he's trying to do but having him there I don't think I don't know. I'm I'm very confused by why Trump would allow Romney in this meeting, because last time I checked, they aren't on good terms. <laughs> so that's pretty odd. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mitt Romney sucks. So does Matt Myers, uh, and so does the ALA ALA AHA Cancer Association. They all they they're all just shills, man. So all right, all right. I saw a few questions fly by. A lot of people in the chat. What is up, everyone? Welcome to live mixing. Let me see if uh, let me let me go back and see some questions here. 
Let's go back. Let's go back. Okay, maybe nothing too much. Um, let me see if there's any comments. Um, uh, where are we at? Where are we at? I saw Concrete River said shout out to Enjoy for sure. Enjoy. I mean, this was interesting because Enjoy doesn't need to do this. Uh, it really seems like they are pioneers. I mean, they are pioneers of the electronic cigarette. They they were the they they're the Cetera lawsuit, right? They're the reason why vaping is here today. And to have them again come in in this landmark meeting and state this case, like, look, we don't even benefit from you banning flavor. We, we we only benefit from you banning flavors. You're only going to hand over the market to us. That's not what we want. We want this entire industry to stay here because this is this is important. This is the reason why it's been so successful. It's just so cool to hear that, man. So cool. And I think it got a lot of respect from the vaping community who might have seen them more as uh, a big tobacco-like company. They've always been sort of seen that way, even though it's not really true. They are a vaping company. Um, I didn't know that they were still number two in the world, which is interesting to me. Graham says, Romney's reminder of all bad choices. He just wants to look at him. I don't even know what you're writing. Uh, Romney's reminder, if all bad choices, he just wants to look at him. Do he doesn't become him. <laughs> I, I have no idea what you're trying to say, Graham. You need a fucking spell check. Um, Daniel, they didn't point out the real and most important reason for youth vaping. That shit, that shit jewel, that 50 milligram salt nick have to be limited to 20 milligrams. I disagree with you there. I don't know if we need to be limiting nicotine. I'm surprised they didn't bring it up, but... Um, I don't know if that's necessary because it's only going. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not opposed either to a nick cap. I'm really not opposed to that, but I'm not exactly sure if that's something that. Um, I'm not exactly sure that's something that. I don't know. I am surprised they didn't bring that up though. Uh, you know, a nicotine cap, removing them from C stores. Those, these were all kind of things that were, other than a nick cap, kind of things that were kind of dis discussed. You know, marketing restrictions, stuff like that. Uh, let me let me close this this is loud all right all right michelle hughes trump and romney hate each other so that's a plus for us yeah i'm not exactly sure why he was even there in the first place i guess because he has that senate bill uh i mean i guess i'm not i don't know overall yeah that, I mean, this was fascinating. Someone who's been covering this stuff for a while, so fascinating. I mean, it just, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy we're at this position. Crazy in a bad way as well. Not crazy in a good way. It is not good. <laughs> this is not good. I mean, we're on our last legs here. Uh, let's hope that Trump implements a 20, Tobacco 21 and he says, this is it. This is all I'm doing. Don't ask me to do anything else. I'm leaving it to the FDA to do PMTA. Then we go, we challenge the PMTA either in court or we try to make our case there. Um, I don't know what the steps are from here. I'm sure Tony Abood and his team are working on something like that now, but that needs to be changed. That's the death. That's always been the nail in the coffin, the PMTA. That's always been the nail in the coffin and that needs to change. Otherwise, we're back at square one. We're back at losing the entire industry. It's gonna be in or turning to an illicit market. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. See, the, are, do, I see a lot of people talking about the youth, the youth vaping issue. The youth vaping issue is not an issue for one. It's really not. It's a manufactured epidemic. So it's not even really an issue. The numbers are very, very low, right? Uh, kids experimenting is different than kids addicted to something, using it every day. Uh, so that's not even an issue to, for one. Secondly, the reason why they bring the youth issue up is because it's the only thing that they have against vaping. It's the only thing that they can bring up. Yet, when you look at the data, it's only a jewel issue. It's only a jewel issue. Like, like Enjoy and like Reynolds said, they have nothing to do with it. Their numbers are like 1%, 2%, which is extremely low for the numbers that they sell. So if we can get across that and just push the blame onto the losers over at Juul, then um, I mean it would only benefit us. We have to make sure that the flavors are allowed. Now, if they try to start, one thing I'm afraid of is making concessions on flavor. 
saying, okay, we will only allow these types of flavors. Well, you can't have flavors that are candies. You can't have flavors that are, you know, stuff like that. Because once you get into that territory, I mean, there's, uh, there's no discern. Like there has to be, you can't do it. That's like trying to ban colors, right? I'm going to ban fuchsia, purple, and violet. And it's just like, okay, but what about all the other colors in between? You know what I mean? It's really impossible to regulate flavors. Um, so that's interesting. Now you can regulate the names and the marketing of these flavors, but to actually go in, someone will have to vape it and we would have to entrust that someone to make damn sure that they know what they're doing, right? To make damn sure that everything that they vape is exactly what it is that they're vaping. And that's impossible to do. That's, impo that's a person that's impossible to find. Let's get into why flavor art. Let's get into the mixing section of the show. What time is it? Six o'clock? All right, we're good to go. It's six o'clock. We're gonna get into, we're gonna get into, uh, why flavor art is the best for noobs. This is why. So let me get a bunch of flavor art flavoring really quickly. I thought I put all this in fucking. All right. All right, all right, all right. Yes, Bulldog, I see you. I see you in the Twitch chat. What's up? You have a question? Feel free to ask the question. You don't have to you don't have to try to get my attention. Just ask away. Ask away. All right, so here we go. This is why flavor art is the best for names. You really don't need much in the way of, how do I explain this? The reason why I like flavor art so much is because they blend so well with their own flavorings, but they're just so, easy to use really they're just really easy to use and they've always been this way head and clouds is a perfect example of someone that has kind of taken that concept to the extreme right a lot of head and clouds flavors or recipes rather were flavor art flavorings that they just kind of made sense so he's going to make a strawberry lemonade he's going to take flavor art strawberry flavor art lemon sicily maybe an accent of lime he puts them together you have a strawberry lemonade and that's really it, right? That's essentially the soul. That's what we're doing in mixing. But flavor art does it in a way where it's a lot more easy to understand as a new user. So what I want to do is just take two flavorings and we're just going to mix two flavorings up. You might notice that it's going to be very similar to a recipe that I released recently on my Instagram. Well, I, re I released it everywhere, but um, I wanted to show people how easy this stuff really is when you know what you're doing and you know, and you know how to spell. So this is the recipe that I'm talking about. My mango elope recipe, which I highly recommend you check out. It's delicious. I'm actually vaping it now. Delicious stuff. Delicious.
What is my favorite Disney movie? Uh, I don't really know. I don't know if I have a favorite Disney movie. Uh, maybe Brink. What's a Disney movie that... Maybe Brink. I would say Brink. I liked Brink a lot when I was a kid. All right. Let's take Peach. We're going to take... We're gonna take peach. Should I take peach or should I take white peach? Peach is easy to blend. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go. We'll take banana. We're gonna take banana. We're gonna take strawberry. We're gonna take fresh cream. That's it. And we're gonna have a little sweetener in hand. We have three ingredients here. I wanna make a ba strawberry banana smoothie. So all I need is three ingredients. I didn't mix this recipe before. I'm just taking three ingredients that I think are gonna work well together. Now we're gonna take this over to ELR. We're gonna create a recipe. Did anyone ever discover who the real Head and Clouds is? Yeah, I know some people know. Um, some people know. I, I I don't know this information, but some people do. I hope this works. Is this working? No. God damn it. This fucking camera is broken, man. It's broken, and I Mom, hate it. Mom, I want a vape. Mom, I want a vape. Let's see how long that lasts. All right, so we have, we're gonna make 10 mils. Uh oh, what did I do? Having technical difficulties, all right. There we go. So we're gonna take juicy strawberry. This might not be the best strawberry to use. Strawberry juicy, it will go 2.5%. Yep, there goes that camera. All right, sorry guys, this, this camera doesn't work anymore. I, I don't know what's going on. I might have to buy a new camera or a new computer maybe. We're gonna take banana, Flavor Arts banana. So simple, right, simple. How do they call it? They call it Bono, Flavor Arts Bono. We're gonna go at 0.5%, very, very low. And we're gonna take fresh cream. We're going to mix that in at 1%. And that's it. That's it. As a matter of fact, maybe I should do marshmallow instead. Marshmallow to me has a little bit more of a smoothie feeling, right? I know I got it out here somewhere. I thought I did. I thought I did. Yes, I do. Do fresh cream or do I do... Marshmallow. I feel like marshmallow would be better. We'll go fresh cream. We'll just go fresh cream. And then I like to add a little soup. Half a percent. Let's go. Let's mix it up and see how this goes. Now, I would suspect that this would be pretty good, to be honest. But we might need to tweak a percentage or two. And I really hope this works out because I, like I said, I didn't, I didn't make this recipe before. So I'm just going off of a very simple way of mixing with flavor art. We're gonna do like one little drop of sweetener. God damn. 
I think I'm out of PG. Oh, I can smell it. it. Smells like a strawberry banana shake. The old dog, I have a whole kit and I still prefer one shots. Hey man, some people like the ease of use with it and they're pretty fucking good. You know, these one shots are, whether they're mine or another mixer's one shots, they're developed by people that know how to mix. So you're gonna have a pretty good experience. All right, let's see how this one goes. I mean, it's that simple. This is delicious. It's delicious. It's so good. We took three ingredients, right? Strawberry juicy, and it just, this is why it's so easy, because Flavor Art makes it easy like this. We want a strawberry banana smoothie, right? In your head, you go, okay, I need a strawberry, I need a banana, and I need some sort of like creamy thing. We took strawberry juicy, we took banana, we took cream fresh, we added some sweetener, and we got exactly what we were looking for. We got that exact profile. Now, is it groundbreaking? Is it the best recipe I've ever uh, I've ever made? No, but it's really good. And there's a lot of flavor and it was very simple to make and it didn't involve any development time. This is the power of, of, uh, of flavor art. I mean, it, it's just, it's everything. You can do it with so many combinations of their flavorings. And their fruits are all very simple. Orange, mandarin, mango. They have, you know, grapefruit, uh, pineapple. I mean, it's not, you know, uh, pineapple, blueberry, white chocolate with mi mixed with, you know, hints of anise, like a lot of the other flavoring companies where they kind of get a little bit sticky. These are all just like single, simple flavorings that blend well, really, that really uh, blend well together. And that's why it's really hard to not recommend flavor art to, to new mixers because it does involve the development process, but it makes it almost uh, step by step. You know, it makes it almost like a step by step. You want a strawberry banana smoothie, add strawberry, add banana, add the smoothie. You're done, that's it. I mean, this is really good. I'm not even kidding. After you make this, right, if you like it, you like where the flavor's at, feel free to go in and tweak it. You wanna add a little bit more strawberry or you wanna add a little accent of something else? So simple. Let's do another one. We have strawberry, we have a strawberry banana shake. Let's call it, let me, let me name this appropriately. Okay, I'm gonna make this one public for you. ELR is gonna do this for about 20 minutes and freeze. As a, as a new, as a newbie, I'm assuming, the hardest thing to figure out is the right percentages to use for each flavoring. Okay, yes. So with flavor art, I normally like to stick around one to 2%. You go by the 5% rule, it's 5%, you wanna test flavors at 5% with TFA, Capella, Flavor West, um, who else is a 5% ruler? One on one.
I would say that's a I would say that's about it for five percent rule. So TFA, Flavor West, Capella one on one. You test those at five percent, and then at one percent you test Flavor Art, Anywhere, or Flavora. So those are the companies that you want to stick at one percent. With Flavor Art, I normally stick around one to two percent. Some flavorings you can go up to three, four, five, six percent. Some flavorings you can't even go above one percent. So just start every flavoring at 1%. If I did this recipe where they were all 1%, I'd probably get a little bit unbalanced where the banana was probably a little bit too powerful. I know the banana is a little bit strong. So that's why I use that at half a percent and then the strawberry at two and a half percent in this recipe, I think. Um, and that just comes with the experience. But even if you did 1%, it would probably come out pretty good, right? You would, you would mix it up all at 1%, you would go, yeah, the banana is a little bit too strong. You back off the banana, you increase the strawberry, and your recipe's done. Your recipe's done. You move on to the next one, or you know, you you tweak it or something. See, ELR always does this. Let's see if it saved. Did it save? It did. Okay, good. All right, let's do another one. Let's do another one. You guys, give me a combo. Give me a two and flavor combo. Like a this and a this, mix them together. Just start spouting them off in the chat. Have you found a good use for cranberry by any flavor house? I am interested in making a cranberry sauce recipe. Uh, look at my, cra I made a cranberry sauce recipe. I forget the name of it, it has some ridiculous name but it's, you might be able to search it on the website. Um, and whatever I did there is a good cranberry. Uh, I forget what it was though. I, I can't I, I can't off the top of my head remember. I bought Hazel by Milkman and once loved it. And there's a clone recipe of that on ELR. Have you tried that one? I have not, nor have I tried the, the, the juice either. Sorry, I can't be of much help there. On ELR uh, poll, flavor art is number one. That, that would make sense to me. That would make sense to me. DIY Down Under, may I ask for a massive shout out to Sean Casey for his advocacy efforts thus far in this battle? Yes, always a big shout out to our friend Sean Casey and Richard Hong. Man, it would have been cool to see Sean Casey at that meeting. That would be cool. They got his boy, Tony, there, though. I see kiwi, strawberry, mint chocolate, pistachio, ice cream, blueberry waffle, peanut butter and bacon. All right, peanut butter and bacon guy. Um, okay, keep them coming, keep them coming, keep them coming. Pistachio ice cream. See their pistachio, I'm not sure is the best pistachio for, for this case. You might wanna use TFA. Maybe we'll try that one later. Watermelon grape, kiwi cantaloupe, peach passion fruit. Peach passion fruit, sweet green apple, kiwi strawberry. Okay, okay, okay. All right, let's do a kiwi strawberry really quickly, easy. Yeah, I'm gonna take ju juicy strawberry. I like the juicy strawberry. Just keep them coming. Now I need kiwi. All right, so you're gonna see how fucking easy this is. So easy. So I have kiwi, apple, strawberry. We're gonna take the same thing, flavor our juicy strawberry. Two and a half percent. I'm gonna take flavor art kiwi. We're gonna go two percent. 
And then I'm gonna take Fuji, Fuji Apple. Maybe I want a little apple in there, right? Maybe I just want a, an accent. So we have our two main notes. They're gonna be fun, you know, swirling together, having fun. You know what? No, I'm, I'm not even gonna add Fuji. We're just gonna do kiwi strawberry. And then we're gonna add some sweetener. Sweetener is optional. That's it. Let's see. Let's see where this takes us, right? I mean, I, I'm trying to make this so easy that it's like elementary how easy it is. You know, it's this is not a difficult thing, especially when you have someone who can who can just show you how to do it. I'm showing you guys. I'm giving you guys the tools to success. Flavor art. If you're a new mixer and you want to get into developing, like actually making recipes, it's so easy with flavor art. It's so easy. Okay, we got our strawberry dripped in. Let's go juicy or kiwi now. We're making only 10 mils. Always make little amounts at first. Okay, and we're gonna top it off with a drop of sweetener. Okay. Add our additives. Flick of the wrist. Again, I haven't made this recipe. I don't know. This might not work out. We might need to tweak it. But I do have faith in my flavor art brethren. Nice strong shake. Orange creamsicle? Sure, we'll do that one next. Sure. Keep them coming. We could do an orange creamsicle. Super easy. I'm I'm hoping you guys who are new or who who haven't gotten into development or you haven't made your own recipes yet. Maybe you're only buying one shots or you're only mixing other people's recipes. Hopefully you're listening, you're paying attention because I'm telling you. These are great. These are delicious. The mango loaf is excellent. It's the I actually spent a while developing that one. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, you know, um, the whole time I was testing flavor art mango. When I do flavor book testing, it's quite extensive. And I was like, how do I use this mango in a very simple way, but really accentuate it? And then I tried a bunch of different things, and finally I was like, let me just let me just put it next to cantaloupe and see what happens. And it was delicious. Mama, it's so good. Hey, thank you so much for the sub, Shebra. Much love, man. Thank you to everyone subbing over on Twitch. Feel free to come watch me over on Twitch, guys. Uh, there's, it's a lot better quality. There's a lot more features over there. My Amazon Blacksmith is over there. So if you're ever looking for supplies, what supplies that I have, over on my Twitch, click on the Amazon Blacksmith. You click on any of those products, you buy them, I get a kickback, it's excellent. I mean, that's good. All right, let's try the strawberry kiwi. I don't know. Let's see. It doesn't get any more simple than this. It doesn't get any more simple than this. This is really good. It tastes like strawberry kiwi Capri Sun, if you've ever had one Mom, of those. I want a vape. That's what this tastes like. Hey, thank you so much for uh, the follow, Nick. It tastes like strawberry kiwi Capri Sun. Can I make this any more simple? You wanted kiwi strawberry, I gave you flavor art strawberry, flavor art kiwi. This is going, this is like I'm telling you, this is, Head and Clouds made a career of doing this, right? Head and Clouds made a, an entire career of finding this out, you know, it's saying, hold on, flavor art blends really well together. Their flavorings have a lot of flavor. You don't need to use much of them, so you're not wasting a ton of money. And it's just straightforward. Now, they, you know, Head and Clouds took it a little bit further and added a lot of accents and 
Uh, some people hated their recipes. I thought that a lot of them were really good. I always was a big fan. Um, and can I make it any more simple? We're going to do orange creamsicle next. I do want to point out, I like adding sweetener to flavor art. I find that it drastically improves the stickiness, the syrupy. It's like coats your mouth in flavor. You might not like that. So if you don't, then don't use the sweetener. But it does, the sentiment remains very simple. All right. Yes, I got the drawers from uh, Ikea. The drawers are from Ikea, not Amazon. Um, now we got orange creamsicle next. Come on. Let's save this one. Here you go. Kiwi strawberry. Going to save it. This is part of my dead simple collection. That's what I'm gonna call it. Dead simple collection. No one's no one's allowed to take it. I coined it. You heard it here first. Not allowed to call anything dead simple. No one's allowed to use the dead simple moniker in their recipes. It's mine now. Sorry, I took it. Ha ha. I win. You lose. This is what ELR does. You press save and then it rotates for two hours. And then I don't know if I close it. Does it save my recipe? Does it delete it? I don't know. It's been doing this for years. Mom, I want a vape. Mom, I want a vape. Okay, okay. Right, guys? Right? We're gonna do blood orange. This one's gonna need a little bit Mom, more because it is a little bit more complex. But I wanna go blood orange. What else? What else? What other orange do I want? Just regular orange, maybe? Or ro maybe royal orange? Yeah, we'll go royal orange with that one. Mm. I think I'm gonna go fresh cream again. I don't wanna make this too difficult for you. Where is it? Fresh cream and then I'm thinking... Bring my motherfucking vape, boys! Hey, thank you so much for the sub, Michelle. Much love, much appreciated. Twitch Prime sub, thank you so much. Do I go vanilla gelato? I think so. I think so. Four ingredients, okay? Four ingredients. I wonder if I can simplify it. I wonder if I can just go blood orange and then just go vanilla ice cream. Let's try it. Let's just see, let's try it. Do I wanna get the fresh cream Vienna cream route? Oh, that, that Vienna cream smells like nail polish remover. Let's just try it. Let's just try it. I mean, we're 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 two for two for now, so let's try this one. So this is orange sickle. Dead simple. I mean, I can't make this any more simple, right? I really can't. I mean, I could try, but I don't know if I'll succeed at doing that. Blood orange. We're going to go at... We'll go at 3%, okay? 3%. 
and then vanilla gelato, vaniglia. Mom, I want we're gonna to go at three percent as well, and we're gonna go half a percent is super sweet. Thank you to everyone with the follows. Thank you so much. You guys like my new drop, my new follow drop? Okay, that's it. Let's see. Let's see. That's it. Okay. So we're going to drip in blood orange, 3%. So it's like next time I hear someone like, oh, it's too difficult. I'm going to show them this. I'm going to clip this out. I'm going to say, look, it's not, it's not too difficult. You just needed someone to show you the way. And that's what I'm here for. You needed to be led to the water and now you are able to drink. Okay. This, this is mainly for people too. hold on a second, guys. I need to pour some, some PG. Hey, thank you. Chad Bra, for the sub. Yeah, bro, with the sub, man. Thank you. I don't recommend anyone do this because I am a professional. Okay. When you guys get this many years of experience, you're going to be able to pour the way that I'm that I'm able to pour. No assists, no funnels, no cylinders, all hands. All hands. Did I add my nick in here? I don't remember if I did or not. I don't think I did. Was DIY or die taken on Twitch? No, it was not. It was not. This wasn't, I was never supposed to, I never thought about streaming on Twitch um, until I did the DIY or Die show and then I already had the No Life Digital channel. We have, I have another channel where we we do a podcast every week on Tuesday, 6.30, come join. Uh, it's about gaming and tech and that's, that's what we use Twitch for. So when I um, created the show and started streaming on Twitch, I figured let's just use the same thing because there was a lot of people already over there. I just never changed it. So there's no, no point to having like two different Twitch streams when it's all gonna go to the same place. What am I and Kate up to tonight? I'm not exactly sure yet. Been busy, been, it's been a busy week. It's been a busy couple of months to be honest. I feel like it's been nonstop, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Are all these flavor art flavors that you, are there any flavor art flavors that you wouldn't recommend? You know, I'm gonna get into my, my flavor art review later. Not today, but like at another time, I'm gonna do the whole, re review the whole line. And I'll discuss those. Off the top of my head, not really. I mean, I, I don't really recommend people buy Joy anymore. It seems to be too divisive. All right, let's try it out. It's so simple. I mean, this is an orange creamsicle. It really is. It's like unmistakably an orange creamsicle. It's not perfect. 
It's not perfect. It's not the best orange creamsicle that I can make. But it's good. And it's an orange creamsicle. You know what I mean? Like, it is what I thought it was going to taste like. Not the biggest fan of that vanilla gelato, though. I think I would have went with the fresh cream. I think the fresh cream would have been a better pairing. I mean, I can't make it any more simple. This is why Flavor Mom, R is the best for noobs. And it's everything. You want mango mandarin? Mango, uh, yeah, mango mandarin? Mix them together. It's going to taste great. You want or royal orange and pear? Mix them together. It's going to taste like an orange pear. Um, I mean, I can go on and on and on. I can do this all day. I can take two flavorings, put them together, and we have a great flavor. You want to get crazy? Go ahead. Add, two, add three flavorings. You know, maybe you want mango mandarin with a little pear. Throw it in. It's gonna, it's, they do, Flavor Art does that blend so well. They're just able to just sit next to each other. They're all gonna remain present and they're gonna taste great. When you wanna blend them, for some reason they just blend, like the orange creamsicle. It doesn't taste like orange on top of cream. It tastes like an orange creamsicle put together. Um, their cocktails, you know, they're, they are fun to make. They're, they're teas, they have bergamot and they have different, uh, kind of woody flavors to add to teas and stuff. I mean, the, the possibilities are really endless with Flavor Art. They're the reason why they are a must-have. It's a must-have flavoring company as much as TFA, as much as Capella. I would even say maybe even more so just because as a new mixer development, it's just so much more fun on Flavor Art. There's Your, your hit rate is so much higher, I should say, with Flavor Art. You're going to come out with way more wins doing this type of development with flavor art than you would TFA, Flavor West, Capella. Um, you know, the thing about like Flavora, it's, Flavora is kind of the same, but it's more of, it, it's a little bit more demanding. You need to know a little bit more about percentages. You need to know your flavorings a little bit more. With flavor art, it's just dead simple. It's, hey, mix this orange with this cream, you have a creamsicle. You know what I mean? Sure, you could do it with TFA and Flavor Art and, and or TFA and Flavor West and Capella, but, you know, you're going to run into flavorings that you're just like, how, what are these? You know, how do these work? Plus, their flavoring percentages are a little wacky. Some are too strong at 1%. Some are too weak at like 5%. It's just, a little, again, a little bit more demanding. This, it, it, it could, it, you couldn't make it easier. Do you guys have any questions? I just gave you three dead, simple, delicious recipes. I'm going to tweak the orange sickle one. Now, nah, I'll just post it out there. Maybe someone will like it. Maybe it's... I'll, I'll write steep for a couple days. I don't know. It seems like it might just need to steep. There you go. You have three dead simple recipes. And I, I don't even know what else to say. Hopefully you guys uh, understand what I'm trying to put out there, you know? Yeah, that's a creamsicle. That's a creamsicles. What flavors would you suggest for a first timer making a custard recipe? Says Chabra. Flavor Arts Premium Custard if you can get it. If not, then try the Capella Custards. Try Flavor Art or Flavora's fl uh, Vanilla Pudding and their Vanilla Custards. Anywhere it's Vanilla Custard is good. Custards are tough. I don't recommend making custards for beginners. It is tough. It's a lot tougher than people think. You can make, you know, you can mix up 10% of Cap V1, v VCV1 at 10% and let it sit a couple months and that'll be good. But if you want to do like a flavored custard, it is a little tough. All right. I see you guys are asking for some more profiles. Um, we'll come back to all of them. We'll come back. We'll come back. We'll come back. Uh, all right. We'll answer that one. Answer my question. Do you have agreements with any major flavor websites such as Bull City, Easy Express, or Liquid Barn? Easy Express and Liquid Barn, and maybe even Bull City, they might all be the same thing. I know Liquid Barn, you use code DIY or DIY, you're going to get 15% off. Uh, Easy Express, you get a discount as well. I'm not exactly, I forget exactly how much it is. But yeah, you use the name, feel free. 
they like it when you guys use my promo codes anyway so so feel free to go use them diy or die liquid barn isig express and i think maybe bull city let me double check i could be wrong though maybe it was like a limited thing i don't remember Yes, DIY or Die also works at Bull City. You're going to get uh, 6% off. 6% off, which is a nice deal. Have I got the new flavor art flavorings? No, I haven't got them yet. I can't wait. I want to try their mangoes. Octopus french fries? What? Does Flavor Art have any good coffee or cappuccino? I mean, I like their tiramisu a little bit, but it still kind of it runs into that same burnt espresso flavor. All right, what do you guys think? Was this fun? Was this good? Was this informal? Was this, or was it informative? Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you guys thought of the meeting. Let Drop them in the comments, not the chat, because we're going to get out of here. I love you all. I will see you guys next week. We're going to be rocking and rolling. Head up my website, DIYRDiveVaping.com. Follow me over on Twitter and on Instagram, at DIYRDiveVaping. Guys, let's go. We got work to do. We got mixing to do. We got vaping to save. It's up to me and you guys to save vaping, right? We're vaping's big backup plan, so we need to make sure we're here for them if anything were to happen. Um... Keep on, keep on being creative and um, just be safe out there. <laughs> uh, if I don't, uh, oh wait, no, it's not, it's not. Thanksgiving's next week. All right, well, I'll see you guys Monday. Keep mixing.